Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Friday, October 11. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. The inability to clear vehicles at the Bridgetown port as a result of challenges with the Asicuda World System is impacting the bottom line of Barbados's largest importer of electric vehicles. Managing Director of Mega Power Limited, Joanna Edgel, tells Barbados today issues encountered last month alone resulted in her company losing out on hundreds or thousands of dollars in sales as it has been unable to clear items from the port for over six weeks. While Edgel admits that she was not fully aware about the reason for the holdup, a major part, she says, seems to relate to tariffs and codes that are required to clear the items. Our code changed. So we previously had a code that we would enter in order to clear vehicles. So that code is not even there. So there is a new code, but the new tariff doesn't match the old tariff. And also it has not carried over our I guess, information, I'm not quite sure. Um, what I do know, though, is our customs broker is working on it. The government seems to be working on it as well, um, but it really is a matter of urgency, and not just for us, but for businesses across Barbados. Changes are coming for Barbados's liquor license system, which will see the establishment of a liquor licensing authority. Minister of Commerce, Small Business and Entrepreneurship Dwight Sutherland says that the intended changes will also result in a much quicker process of obtaining licenses. Sutherland made the announcement at the stakeholders consultation at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre this morning. But we found when we mapped the process, we had some 1,000 liquor licenses waiting to be approved in the magistrate court. And they were not approved by the magistrate. They were approved by a clerk within the magistrate's jurisdiction. This is way too long. And it took some three months, as long as three months, to have a liquor license approved. Those small shops suffered. The small businessmen suffered. And indeed, those manufacturers and other retailers, whether it is in the hotel industry, restaurants. So we saw the need to address it. And it took some 21 days if the process was seamless to approve from application to approval. And with the remodeling of this current legislation, it will take some seven days from application to approval process. And we are utilizing an information communication technological platform and ICT platform to ensure that business is indeed done more efficient. There's yet another call from Chief Justice Samarston Gibson for more attorneys to consider going into criminal law. It came today as 61 new attorneys took the oath and were admitted to the bar at a special sitting of the Supreme Court this afternoon. Samarston told reporters he's hoping that the lawyers would heed the call. They have not been responding nearly as nearly as much as I would like, but um, I'm hoping that I, I haven't given a hope. I haven't given a hope. I, I, I think that if I, I keep asking, they keep asking, you know, um, and I let them know why they, they, why they need to do this and, and the important public service that they'll be performing. At some point, they'll, 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 they'll do it. The, the problem really is that the, the the professions, the new professions, now mainly women, and they are intimidated by by, by, by going up to the prison. And um, I mean, I've been to the prison now on a few occasions. And when the guys are there and they're seeing the seeing the ladies and they're shouting all sorts of things, particularly stating their intentions rather um, explicitly, and you can't tell them. Well, you know, they're in prison already. So 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 what what do what do they have to lose? You know, so. Um, it, it, it intimidates the ladies, but there are few who have who have gone on and, and made made a good living in criminal law, and um, we hope we, we hope that we, we, we have some more of them. Meantime, Acting Attorney General Wilfred Abrams urged the new attorneys not to limit their practice to one jurisdiction. I actually believe there's no right area. The traditional areas of law have opened up, and we keep seeing ourselves as being limited to Barbados and practicing or, or struggling to make a living in Barbados. If you look at how many Trinidadians are called to the bar in Barbados, then a lot of people have cross-boundary 
or cross jurisdictional expectations. The Prime Minister is fond of saying, be a global citizen with Barbadian roots. And I urge that on all the attorneys. Staff and students appear to have settled back in at the St. Thomas Base Sharon Primary School. Word of this from Education Minister Santia Bradshaw, who gave an update on the school plant, which was closed for some three weeks at the start of the new school year due to environmental issues. We've had a couple of reports of people not feeling well, um, but we don't have anything confirmed in terms of anything connected to the issue, to any environmental issues. Um, what I must say is that we were able last week to install and, and to engage rather the services of our entity to be able to do some air quality testing, which was something that the parents had expressed at the meeting when I attended. Um, and I think that we, we have gotten the all clear from them certainly in the week before school started. Um, they're still continuing the air quality test, so we are continuing to monitor to the situation because I'm mindful that people are not settled in their minds in terms of what the actual cause was. But I want to make sure that once people go back into the environment that we actually, if, we, if anything is detected, that we're able to be able to act on it as quickly as possible. So for right now, um, to the best of my knowledge, things have settled down well at school. Um, the Maria Holden Nursery, which is just adjacent, um, I had the opportunity to speak to the principal as well and in terms of their going back into school the previous week, um, she had no reports of any illnesses from the, the teachers. Um, I think she reported, I think it was like 91 out of 94 students were present. Placard bearing students and staff of the St. Michael School took to the streets today to advocate for the prevention of childhood obesity. Over 800 students walked through the environs of the Martindales Road St. Michael School to bring awareness to the worrying issue. Principal Yvette Mayers says the event was part of a number of health activities to mark World Obesity Day. And this is the second time we've had a walk for health. Our first walk for health was in 2016, three years ago. And today is World Obesity Day. And we are one of the model schools appointed by the Harley Stroke Foundation to work in the campaign against childhood obesity. So we felt it was a wonderful time to focus our attention on health. And we felt that we should have gone through the neighborhood, the community, to share some information on health and to make a statement, it was a walk for health. Today, for the rest of the day, we're going to be doing a lot of healthy activities. We're going to be doing some Zumba and some like, dancing, some exercising. We're going to have Heart and Stroke Foundation share some information with students in mainstream agriculture. Um, we're looking at foods, different types of food, drinks, etc. So it's a day where children can get health checks done, you can get your blood pressure checked, you can get your body mass index done, several things you're going to do, all focusing on healthy lifestyle. There's regional and international news after this short break. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Craft Center. Kick off the weekend this Friday from 4 p.m. to midnight with loads of food, drinks, and entertainment. Get ready for crop over with the Rhythm Roots Street Parade. Party like it's Kadooman Day on the street around Pelican Village with costume revelers, music, and more. It's Festive Friday. It's Festive Friday at the Bridgetown Night Market at Pelican Village Center from 4 p.m. to midnight. Admission free. To news from our regional neighbors now, Trinidad and Tobago's opposition leader Kamala Posad Bissessa dismisses the government's 2020 national budget as a condescending insult to the poor. She made the comment today in responding to the over $50 billion fiscal package presented by Finance Minister Carl Imbert earlier this week. I think that this budget is a condescending insult to the poor an insult to the marginalized, an insult to the working classes, and an insult to the struggling mothers and fathers who, despite difficult circumstances, go out every day with dignity to earn an honest dollar. Remember it is said, do not rob the poor because he is poor, nor oppress the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and plunder the soul of those who plunder them. The contempt which this government has for the poor was on full display on Monday when the minister came to this house and threw out crumbs to the most vulnerable persons in our country. That contempt was compounded yesterday by none other than the Honorable Prime Minister, with his sub-story at the spotlight, 
to make excuses for his government's failure to manage the economy since they entered office. And finally, Japan is bracing itself for what could be its heaviest rain and winds for 60 years as Typhoon Hagibis edges closer. Hagibis is hitting winds of 111 miles per hour, prompting shops, factories and train networks to shut down. Several flights have also been cancelled. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.bobbydistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on ISOB Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Good evening.